Move over, Mickey Mouse. I'm the Disney World rat. Today, I'm exposing our top 10 most valuable Magic Kingdom secrets. I would go so far as to call them rules from my coworkers and I who go to Disney World every single day. Ugh. I'm about to get in so much trouble for telling you these. <laughs> I work with some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And every day of our lives, we put all our brain power towards analyzing every detail of Walt Disney World. In addition, we go to Disney World every single day. One of our reporters from All Ears is in every Disney theme park every single day, including me. All of this knowledge and know-how has made us very opinionated about the right and wrong ways to do Magic Kingdom. So that's what today is all about, telling you how we do Magic Kingdom. We came up with the top 10 rules for conquering Magic Kingdom as decided by myself and my fellow All Ears reporters. Good morning from the TTC. We are arriving at the Rideshare drop-off, which is actually where you get dropped off by bus if you're staying at either Four Seasons or Swan Dolphin or Swan Reserve. And we're arriving here for a very good reason. Because if you park in the parking lot for the TTC with your own car, you have a long line to wait in to even get into the parking lot. Then you have to park, find a parking place. Then you have to walk from the parking place to the uh, area where security is. And that involves getting in another line, physically standing in line with your family. If you arrive by rideshare or by bus from either Four Seasons or Swan Dolphin, Swan Reserve, thank you very much. Have a great day. <laughs> then you uh, you end up skipping the line. And it's not in like a shady way where you're breaking the rules or anything like that. It's literally the way it works. It's how it's set up. So let me show you what this looks like. This is the area where rideshare drops off. Over here, the buses drop off. Now I will say this is a disadvantage if you are paying those premium rates to stay at Four Seasons. The fact that you don't get dropped off at the bus stop right in front of Magic Kingdom is kind of a disadvantage. Same with Swan, Dolphin, Swan Reserve. Yeah, you get to walk to Hollywood Studios and Epcot, but you gotta be dropped off at the TTC with the rideshare folks when you wanna to go to Magic Kingdom. Now take a look at this line over here. Do you see all these people folding in? They look like they've been journeying a long way. And that's because they have been. They had to wait in line to park and then they had to walk all the way from their spot, which depending on where they had to park could have been a long, long ways away. And we are literally asked to merge with this crowd from Rideshare. So rule number one, we don't wait in line at parking when we go to Magic Kingdom. All right, we did it. We're through security and that took no time and not a long walk at all. And now it's time for bonus TTC rule number two. We take the monorail. Yes, you'll hear cast members hyping the boat, telling you it'll get you there faster. It, it, there might be instances when this is true, but in terms of day-to-day -day basis, taking the monorail has proven to be much faster and taking the right side is the key. Do you see how there's this rail here? People get confused and they think that the left-hand line is gonna be for another monorail going somewhere else. They both go to the same place. They're actually loading the front. The left loads the front half of the monorail. The right loads the back half. We wanna be in the back half because we wanna go all the way back to gate 12 to load there. The very last row on the mono monorail, the very last car on the monorail, because when we exit at Magic Kingdom, we'll actually be the in the first position to be able to walk out the door, take a left down a little set of stairs, 
and be the very first people on our entire monorail train to get through the turnstiles at Magic Kingdom. And like magic, we take a left. Everyone else is getting off behind us. And we're down this little staircase and we're already there. I mean, we're not already there, but we're a lot closer to being there than a lot of other people. Now, to stay true to the theme of this video, people, those of us who go to Disney World every single day, we do use the annual pass holder line, which sometimes is the best line to use, and sometimes it isn't. It just depends. Some days there's a long line at the pass holder entrance, and some days there's no line, and today is a no line day. Here we go, we're scanning in. How easy was that, right? Almost too easy. Magic Kingdom rule number one, we use shortcuts. Let's say you find yourself on Main Street USA. It's a great place to find yourself, and you are looking to get to Tomorrowland quickly and comfortably. Well, of course, the obvious route is over the Tomorrowland Bridge over there. I mean, that's the very dramatic walkway that has a marquee literally telling you you're entering Tomorrowland, but that's not the best way to get to Tomorrowland from the hub or from Main Street. This that looks like a restaurant entrance to Tomorrowland Terrace Restaurant, which is not even in operation right now, we're using it as a shortcut. Now, if you happen to need a restroom on your way, these restrooms are very private, very quiet. The great thing about this breezeway is that it feels breezy and it's covered, so you're, you're shielded from the sunlight. And here we are underneath the people mover, which is super cool. And as we turn this corner, we see we're already here. And I think we beat a lot of people who maybe got a head start on that bridge before we even did. So that is my first favorite shortcut in Magic Kingdom. All right, my next favorite shortcut in Magic Kingdom. You've just gotten off Mad Tea Party and you have a reservation for a lightning lane at Jungle Cruise in seven minutes. There is a parade coming through. There are tons of people in the hub and you need to figure out how to get across avoiding them. Over here by the Merida meet and greet on the side of the castle, you are able to cut behind and use this secret path. Here we are in Liberty Square. Just passing through this morning, but you can see it's a beautiful day in Liberty Square. Come and get your character caricature drawn. You could maybe do that later, but right now we're passing through behind the old Christmas shoppy. Love it. This is it. This is uh, this is the big cross into Adventureland. It has happened and it happened quickly. We made it in time. So this is a great trick to remember, especially because when those parades and uh, cavalcades end up making their way through the hub, everything gets stopped and you gotta figure out how you're gonna get over here and make your lightning lane reservations. All right, we have one more shortcut to show you. It's very exciting. This is kind of a bonus shortcut, but the breezeways that cross between Liberty Square and Adventureland and Frontierland and Adventureland are definitely a great way to get back and forth between the rides and attractions that exist in both places. We have made our way to the start of what I'll call, I guess, a boardwalk. Okay, it's along the water here. It's along Tom Sawyer's Island over there. You can see the beautiful riverboat. 
And this is a path that is, again, very useful during a parade because you won't be able to get through. You won't be able to cross. This is your walkway during parade times. And uh, especially right now with Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and then when Tiana's Bayou Adventure reopens, those are two major attractions that are kind of hidden or stuck back in this corner. They get blocked off by the start of the parade route. So you really wanna know about this boardwalk for those times and even during the day when the walkways are really crowded in Frontierland, you're able to cut over here and use the boardwalk and zoom back over here to the rafts to Tom Sawyer Island, to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and then sometime in the future, pretty soon, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. The next rule, we don't use the best bathrooms. Behold the Tangled Restrooms. They are iconic and legendary for their theming, their cleanliness, and the fact that they're nice and new. We've hyped them a lot on All Ears, and we've made them maybe a little too iconic at this point. The problem is that regardless of time of day, and this is on the not busy side, this is the slower side, there are always people congregating around here and going in and out, and you can see how busy these bathrooms are, and they're not relaxing and private. I mean, they're private. You, the door closes and, and everything. So, the All Ears reporters and I like to use other bathrooms. Now, in quick service locations like here in Pecos Bill and also in Cosmic Rays, there are restrooms that are available to guests that are eating in the restaurant. They, they tend to be pretty busy. They're great for if you're already sitting down in the dining room and you want to get up for a second. Not the cleanest. And, um, and it's only because a rush of guests have come in and they haven't had time yet to, to be able to, you know, turn it over and make it perfect again. Not with the Cosmic Rays restroom though. That one tends to consistently be very clean throughout the day. And only a couple times have I gone in there and it's been totally packed to the point where, you know, I actually went and found another restroom. So keep that in mind too, the quick service uh, restaurant restrooms. Oh, Columbia Harbor House is another great example. The restrooms for Columbia Harbor House are back here and they are great if you are eating here. They're clean, they're small, but uh, they're nice and, and quiet, usually. Prime time, I would be uh, hesitant to send you there. Now this restroom next to Space Mountain is one that several of our reporters said was one of their favorite because it was so large and kind of hidden back here so people didn't really know it exists. It's behind the stage that you see in Tomorrowland where you'll maybe catch Stitch making an appearance over here and you can see that the stage kind of hides the, the building where the restrooms are and that makes it, well, kind of a secret. And that's why our reporters love them. The next secret restrooms we love, right here in Tomorrowland Terrace. Yes, this seating area that I hype constantly also has secret hidden restrooms that I've never seen them busy. I've hardly ever been in there with any other pe people. I mean, it's just, amazing how quiet this area is and it's so visible. I mean, it's right here on the corner when you first walk in to Magic Kingdom. And over here at the former site of Splash Mountain, soon to be Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there are some restrooms that were kind of hidden. I mean, you, you had to be exiting the ride basically or in line to notice they were back here. But now 
that the ride is under construction and everything's closed off, including the gift shop, you have arguably some of the quietest, most private bathrooms in all of Walt Disney World right now. And uh, I would have to say they're my favorite. Our next rule, we don't buy soda in cups. Save a little money as a regular park guest, save more money if you are a DVC member or have an annual pass and get those discounts. I'm outside of the confectionery. Mobile order has been placed. We actually have an experiment to do, which is um, kind of exciting. A bottle, a 20 ounce bottle of soda is $4.69. And then when you take your 20% discount off of that, it comes to $3.75. All right, now we're making our way to the other end of Main Street to Casey's Corner, where we are going to place a mobile order for a large soda. $4.99, almost $5, $5 basically. $4.99 to buy a large soda at Casey's Corner. Okay, I've done it. I drank all of my soda. Take the bottle of soda that I just purchased. Let's see if it's the same. Okay, so some of the ice melted, some of the ice I chewed and ate, um, so it's a little bit different. You're pretty close here to the amount of soda you get when it is full for a dollar twenty-four less. The bottle's definitely the the better deal. Next rule: we eat in secret locations all day long. All you see in Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom especially, are huge crowds of people. We're gonna show you where we go to get away from the crowds and eat in Magic Kingdom. My favorite hidden place to eat in Magic Kingdom is in Pecos Bill. And it is a dining room that a lot of people don't even know about. Now, it closes at 5 p.m., it's after five now, so I'm gonna to have to show it to you from a bit of distance, but if you see this sign here, seating with an arrow, follow that arrow up this ramp and you'll find a dining room that's technically a shared dining room with Tortuga Tavern. So you'll begin to see the theming change a little bit back here into more pirate theme. Um, and you could see it's dimly lit, the air conditioning is working very well. It is nice and cool. And there are outlets around the room that you can use to charge your devices. Now you've heard me talk about it before when uh, we ate at Casey's Corner. There weren't any tables, uh, even standing tables available. So we just walked over here with our food and sat down and had all of this space, you know, to ourselves. Uh, and there's a, a great restroom in the back that you can use. This is just the perfect place to come and sit down and get cool for a little bit in the middle of the day here in Magic Kingdom. Not only is this dining room covered, but it always seems to have breeze. I don't know if it's because there are literally fans that are on or just the way it's designed and, and built. It's, it's magical. Here in Storybook Circus, it's a rest area in a circus tent. Look, it's behind these posters. There's an outdoor seating area. You've got Pete Silly Sideshow and right here, Big Top Souvenirs. So there's a lot going on in this little area and people don't really know about this rest area. And I like to think of this rest area as a secret place to eat food. Right over there next to Barnstormer, to the left the, here facing it, is the pathway that connects from Tomorrowland next to Tron. And inside the Tron courtyard is a cool quick service kiosk called Energy Bites that you can get some of the most interesting food in Magic Kingdom. 
But the problem is there aren't a lot of great places to sit, okay? You've got seating sort of out in the direct sunlight or you can stand under the canopy, but nothing is really ideal. So what I recommend doing and what our other reporters recommend doing is bringing your food over from Energy Bites using that side walkway and bring it over here to this amazing hidden rest area. Now, like Tomorrowland Terrace, it is not enclosed, it's covered, there is no air conditioning, but once you get inside here, somehow it gets a lot cooler. Like, it instantly got a lot cooler. And what's great about this spot is that they have areas for you to plug in your various devices. They have both outlets and USB ports. So you can totally hang out here, eat your lunch, eat your dinner, eat a snack, and be hidden from the rest of the world in this hidden dining area in Storybook Circus. In addition to Energy Bites, you can also get food inside Big Top Souvenirs at another section uh, in the middle called Big Top Treats, and they have treat cases. So you can get different cupcakes, candied apples, different flavors of fudge, uh, some of the Werther's baked goods that you can sometimes find at Caramel Kush in Epcot in the Germany Pavilion. Lots of really kind of interesting treats here. If you time Columbia Harbor House just right and don't come at peak time for either lunch or dinner, it's 4.55 p.m. right now, and this is what the dining room looks like. There are all these great little places to sit and kind of get a little distance from other people. And the air conditioning is really amazing in here. Our next rule, we don't pay for bottled water. There are so many locations to get really delicious ice water for free in Walt Disney World, especially in Magic Kingdom. And uh, I'm gonna show you some of our favorites. Cosmic Rays is a great place to get ice water. <laughs> if you order food from here, I'm laughing at myself for reviewing the different ice waters. It's a great place to get it because it tastes really good. It's not really a situation where you can walk up anywhere and ask for one unless you've ordered food or you're ordering food, but it is delicious. <laughs> Very good. Very good water. And we're back at Casey's to ask for a cup of water. Yeah. Though I will say it does taste better today than some other times. I'm really splitting hairs about free water. Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. So you can see they've got this tray set up with all of these ice waters ready for you to um, come in and enjoy. So I grabbed mine. This is delicious and wins a lot of points for convenience because I didn't have to ask. Friar's Nook is a great place to get free ice water. You can walk right up to a mobile order pickup window, which oftentimes won't have a line and just ask nicely. How are you? Don't sleep on the Friar's Nook free ice water. 10 out of 10 flavor, 10 out of 10 convenience, okay? When you're going to other quick service locations, a lot of times they're indoors. You have to go inside, you have to find the counter to get free ice water from, and then, you know, ask nicely for it and all that. Well, Friar's Nook is, look at it, it's right there. There's the counter. You can see it. So all you have to do is walk by, ask nicely, they give you some free water, and it tastes better, in my opinion, than Casey's Corner. Oh, look at that. Do you, is Ice. it delicious? Uh, it's cold, that's all you really need. Our next rule, we don't always wear Disney clothes. This might be controversial. One of my fellow reporters told me she used to wear mini ears or Mickey ears every single time she came into the park and they would be coordinated with her outfit. But as we started to have to come into the parks every day for our reporting jobs, we found that we were running out of clothes to wear. Even I will come into the park some days without a stitch, get it, of Disney clothing. 
and uh, I'm kind of that way today. I wanted to show you an option that I think you probably already know about. It's called Disney bounding. Do you know about this? Where you take the colors of a character and the colors that a character's costume, outfit usually um, incorporates and you pick out clothes from your very own closet that kind of go in that color story. Today, I'll show you the example that I picked out. Literally red shorts, black shirt. And then I have some Mickey Crocs and some Mickey socks and I put them all together and you know, here's what it looks like in this magical photo that I had taken. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that nice? It's an option of something to do. And I didn't pay extra money to buy specific clothes for Disney World. I didn't buy Disney World clothes at Disney World prices. And I saved a lot of money that way. And you can do that too on your vacation. You and your family don't necessarily have to be decked out in Disney IP every day and wearing things that you bought on Shop Disney or in the parks. You can use some creativity. And if you're looking for more ideas of how to either Disney bound or just pick out cute, Disney World outfits, you can check out our All Ears Style Instagram and also the All Ears Style section on All Ears Net. Next rule, our park bag probably looks different from yours. We never used to carry rain gear. We would come to Disney World with a devil may care attitude and say, well, we'll figure it out if it rains. Those of us who come here every day know that it's likely at some point in the day that it will rain. I always pack a poncho every single day, regardless of the season. The other thing we have in our bag that might look different from yours is a really heavy duty industrial strength charger. Okay, this is gonna give us three full charges on our phones. And because literally our entire job depends on our phones, we have to have it charged throughout the day. So this is a must. And in addition to the industrial charger, I carry with me something that you might have in your park bag, fuel rods, okay? In the event that the, my big charger goes out, I have fuel rods with me at all times. And these are very convenient because you can swap them out in the park at locations all over Walt Disney World for new freshly charged ones. One of our reporters shouted out specifically body glide anti-chafe skin protectant. Now, I've never used this particular product. She swears by it and says that she will not leave home for the parks without it. And um, I trust her. The other thing is that you might not find over-the-counter painkillers or band-aids, things like that in our park bags because we realize that if we run out, we can stop by first aid and um, they will gladly provide those items. They will, they'll ask you what's wrong. They wanna make sure that you don't need help beyond just a, an aspirin or a band-aid. Of course, it's always best to be prepared and bring those things with you. Finally, a lot of us chimed in and said, we don't carry water bottles anymore. We don't go around filling up our water bottles at uh, drinking fountains or the water bo bottle fill up stations. Um, sometimes the water that comes from those doesn't always taste the best. And uh, it's also heavy to carry on our back, on our shoulders all day. So we will stop and fuel ask for free water from quick service locations. Next rule, we drink Joffrey's, not Starbucks. There was an almost completely unanimous agreement across all of our reporters that we don't wait in line for the Starbucks on Main Street. We come over here to Tomorrowland to the Joffrey's where there's often not a line. Look at that. It's a walk on. So Joffrey's not only has shorter waits for coffee from what we've experienced, but they also serve coffee that the reporters on our team prefer over Starbucks. 
I asked if it was just the fact that they could grab the coffee and go quickly, and they said no. We actually like the way the coffee tastes. Now, I quit <laughs> drinking coffee a year ago. I drink tea now, which is super annoying, but my stomach feels good, so that's nice. <laughs> but I used to love coffee. I used to drink coffee all the time, and I will tell you the coffee drinks I had from Joffrey's were always really delicious. And the other thing about Joffrey's is it's a Disney thing. It's a, a thing that you can experience here in Disney World that you can't necessarily experience other places. So it's a place that people really associate with Disney and coming to Disney World. And Starbucks, yeah, I mean, you can get anywhere. And yes, it's nice and comforting to be able to get the exact drink that you always get at home. But our reporters and I recommend when you're in Walt Disney World, giving Joffrey's a try. Now, this but when I do order an iced tea in Walt Disney World, it's from Joffrey's. I don't wait in line at, at Starbucks and get iced tea from there. I come here and get an iced, unsweetened black tea, and it's exactly what I need. Our next rule, we all have very particular eating habits. It's very interesting to me that everybody else on the reporting staff said, that when they used to come to Disney World on vacation before they lived here and worked here and came every day for work, that they would always go to the same places then because they knew what to expect. They had fond memories attached to them. There was nostalgia involved. And so they would always end up at eating in places they knew they loved and had loved for many years. Now that they work in Orlando and come to Disney World every day, they like to try new things. And that's the opposite of the way that I am. I like to come here on vacation and try new things all the time. And now that I'm here all the time, I like to eat things that I know are cost effective, that um, are affordable, you know, and that fill me up, that are plant-based, of course, and um, that taste really good to me. And also that are prepared in a time frame that I know about already. I end up eating the same thing in Magic Kingdom every day. Ordering the plant-based patty melt here at Cosmic Rays, I'm addicted to it. I don't know what they do to it to make it taste so good, but it is just about the most delicious thing I can imagine. And it's hard for me to come through Magic Kingdom without ordering it. Our next rule, we don't wait more than 30 minutes in line for a ride. This one comes from my coworker, and I asked her when it when she said this was a very serious rule for her. I said, "Would you mind if we made it 15 minutes?" Because that's sort of where my mind is at, and you know, I, I'm willing to wait maybe 15 minutes in line for a ride when I'm here not filming a, a video or here for pleasure. I really want to get back to my day of reporting and she said no it has to be 30 because when something is posted as 15 it's usually a walk-on but most of the time she experiences that when it's posted 30 it actually ends up being 15. so we're gonna test that out right now and see if that is true or if it's that that's a special thing that only she experiences the 30 minute wait time rule Let's go. All right, to Arland Speedway, posted wait for standby 10 minutes. It's so comfortable, but you can see if you've got longer legs here. Mad Tea Party standby posted wait time right now is five minutes. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin currently showing a 30 minute posted standby wait. Mover 
is posted at five minutes. Space Mountain is 35 minutes posted right now for a standby wait, and that is five minutes over the rule. And we are not going above the rule. No, not even five minutes. Sorry, Space Mountain, today is not our day. I would be very surprised if Winnie the Pooh was under 30 minutes. Oh, but look at that. Surprised and delighted, 25 minutes. This is a cool detail. I don't know if you can see it as well here, but do you see how when they go behind the books, they disappear? It looks like, let's see, watch, there they go, there they go. <laughs> Where did they go? They went into the books. Okay, Barnstormers posted a 10. Prince Charming Rio Carousel posted as a 10 minute standby wait. Twenty minutes. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, <laughs> it's 10 minutes. Wow, well it's been seven hours since we started writing rides here in Magic Kingdom today. And I just counted up, we rode 13 rides in that period, hey! <laughs> and uh, that's almost two, two rides an hour, very close, um, which is incredible. Obviously it's a unique day, uh, the wait times were very low, I was trying to figure out why and I can't figure anything out, there's not a a special ticketed after hours event tonight. Uh, the park is open till 10. Um, so nothing like that would be keeping people away. It's a Wednesday, but I come here on Wednesdays all the time and it's it's very rarely this slow. So I would just say we were lucky and maybe it was the luck of the 30 minute rule. And maybe you should <laughs> adopt the 30 minute rule and uh, perhaps it will force all of the wait times down to as low as we experienced them today. That was really fun. I was not expecting to ride that many rides. This wasn't a challenge. I was just going out to test the 30 minute rule. And I would say, um, I don't really understand what I learned from it other than I had a great time. And maybe that's enough. What did you think of what we've learned from coming to Walt Disney World every day? Is there anything we do to ensure a seamless day in Magic Kingdom that you wanna try on your next Walt Disney World vacation? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch me try to stop Disney from forcing me to use my phone in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> See you next time.